what did we say, at least from my own experience, is the most important decision point in the hierarchy of things. It is price, right? Within the realm, within the subcategory of technical analysis, obviously, price is still the most important. But what is the second most important? Volume, correct. Third most important would be the technical indicators. And this is very important. And I want to begin with this type of context and framework in mind. Why? Because one of the mistakes that I see a lot of people, a lot of traders make is they allow the indicator to lead their decision making. Ako, when I started out, I used stochastics a lot. And I wouldn't, di, di, nga, di nga alaw nakatingin sa presyo. Basta oversold siya, bibili ako. Overbought siya, magbibenta ako. In the same way that when I started using RSI a long time ago, I would just follow the overbought and oversold without looking at price, without looking at volume, without looking at where price was. Was it in an uptrend? Was it in a downtrend? Was it in a sideways? Right? In a lot of ways, we can also use other indicators like MACD. Uy, cross up na, bilin na natin. Diba? When sometimes that cross up can be a cross up inside a downtrend, which you, can, you should be treating differently from a cross up happening inside an uptrend. Which is why it's always very important price, volume, and indicators. Imagine a triangle of decision making. Yung pinamalaking portion ng triangle mo is price, and then your volume. And then last year, indicators. There are a lot of indicators that you can use. If we go to our charting software over here, you can here see indicators you can find in the studies tab on the upper right side of your charting software. Just click studies. And then you'll see a barrage of indicators that you can use. Magsawa kayo, right? ATR, ATR training stops, stops, Bollinger Bands. You have, um, if I'm not mistaken, more than 50 indicators available here. Someone was asking me about CC, yung CMF, right? So you can drag down and select the indicators over here. Now the indicators that we use and I've based my indicators on what my bosses have said that are the most applicable indicators in the Philippine setting. And according to them, the most common used indicators are moving averages, MACD, or moving average convergence divergence, or let's just call it MACD, or RSI. So I hope personally, when I'm trading in my one screen where I have my charts, those are essentially the indicators that I personally use as well for my decision making. So I use moving averages, I use MACD. In the order of importance, I use RSI and moving averages, and I use MACD ng at the least priority. But I also use other indicators like BMI. I use OBV to help filter some of my issues, to filter my watch list. So let's move into the indicators. So let's talk about moving averages. Moving averages are essentially price average lines plotted onto a chart in direct reference to market prices. So moving averages, self-explanatory, they are the average of the price or the closing prices of your stock in question. I want to share with you the moving averages that our head technical analyst thinks works best in the Philippine stock market setting are the simple moving averages. Now let's explore. Two, the first one, 65-day simple moving average is the most important simple moving average across those listed here on the right side. Why is it the most important? It's important for two reasons. Number one, the most important data point when it comes to what affects prices comes out every quarter. And what's that? When it comes to fundamentals, what affects 
stock market movement, earnings, right? The potential for earnings and how prices come out relative to the expectation of earnings. And you see the 65-day moving average being the most important because not only does it greatly influenced by earnings results, but it is also, second reason why it's most important is because it's also called the trending moving average. What do I mean by the trending moving average? It means that, especially since we will be focusing on uptrends, I will tell you and submit to you that majority of uptrends, at least 80%, you will find will always stay above the 65-day trending moving average. Moving averages are so important that even it's used by some of the top fund managers around the world. If you look at the number one trader today, Paul Tudor Jones, so he's a, he's a very popular trader. One of his claims to fame is that he is the guy that was coached by Tony Robbins or is still being coached by Tony Robbins at least for the past 20 years. And what his rule is that he never holds a stock that goes below his own moving average. I think personally he uses a 200-day moving average or an exponential moving average. But he uses that because his fund is pretty big. It's around 11 billion US dollars. Given the fund size, he needs to be buying much earlier before the uptrends happen. But even with a size, a fund size as big as him, he never touches an issue that goes below the 200 EMA, or in simple terms, the 260 day moving average. For retail investors, retail participants such as yourselves, what we'd recommend is using the 65-day trending moving average. In simple moving average terms, it's the 65-day. In exponential moving average terms, it's the 50-day EMA. But for today, we'll be teaching you the simple moving averages. Why? Because majority of the uptrends we've found, at least in the Philippines for the past few years, when uptrends and if uptrends present themselves, they stay above the 65-day EMA. 70 to 80 percent of the time. So that's actually something that you can use as a guide to select. Diba sabi natin kanina, you want to participate in uptrends only. Then one of the ways, one of the filters that you can use is I'll only trade issues that are above the 65-day moving average. Diba? But obviously, you want to trade stocks in uptrends, which means that your 65-day moving average is also above your 130-day and it's above your 260-day moving average. So at least the long-term trend is moving higher. Our trading school, Kalum Trading Institute, which teaches people how to trade full-time, uses the EMA because that's what we feel, that's what we see works globally. But our head technical guy, who's been the number one technical guy for the past 20, 30 years, recommends simple moving average because from his experience, that's what works in the Philippines. The corresponding equivalent of the 65-day SMA is the 50-day EMA. For the 130-day, it's the 100-day EMA. For the 260-day, it's the 200-day EMA. And why are those numbers relevant? 260-day, 260 trading days in a year. 200-day EMA is pretty much the same why, except that it is a weighted average of all the prices. It weights the ones closer to the present date as opposed to the ones farther from the present date. 130 days represent half a year. 65 days represent a quarter of a year, right? You can also use moving averages as your basis for support and resistance as well. Very important. We have a lot of traders that use moving averages, 50-day EMA, 20-day EMA, 32-day 32, 32 SMA, 16-day SMA as a basis for bounces of support. You were saying earlier that there are only certain areas where it's justifiable for you to enter. And these are bounces of support or breakouts of area pattern resistance. 
you can use moving averages as a basis for those bounces of support. So let's say, for example, um, a stock like Eagle. So is Eagle in an uptrend, yes or no? Yes. So it was moving in a sideways fashion, and then after, it broke out of the channel, signifying a beginning, a breakout, which is a beginning of an uptrend. Now, after that, so let's delete this first para at least, ano. So to use the 65-day moving average, we just go to moving average, go over here, moving average, let's click moving average, we click on that, and we have here an option to use either simple or exponential. So let's use simple, which means that we will be creating a moving average that is a running average of the past 65 days. And it will show you that your 65 day is pretty much here. So let's create another one. Moving average, half a quarter is 32 days. So we can change the color of that para may iba naman. And then let's get the shortest one, which is 16. Use a black. So as you'll see, as, price, as prices start to break out and move higher, your shorter term moving averages start to cross above, cross above your longer term moving averages. And that's essentially what you want to see in an uptrend. Your moving averages start to line up with each other with shorter term moving averages above your longer term moving averages. And how this can work is that if you see, let's say for example, prices undergo a duration. So typically you can also use moving averages as potential support areas that you can treat as potential bounces of support that you can use to enter into uptrends. So in, in our sister school, we use these, we usually term these coils, coils that happen above the moving averages. It can happen above the eight day, the 16 day, the 32 day. Obviously in an uptrend, you want to be using issues that are shorter than the 65 day, 32 day, 16 day, thereabouts, as basis for entering the stock. And eventually your goal should be, let's say for example, you have something like DNL. And again, I'm not just showing this to you because it's hindsight. This is a trade that we participated in. And if you see the red line over here, the red line is the 65 day moving average. And it was actually during this time that we used the 65-day moving average as a basis for telling ourselves whether we stay in a position or not. So if you're able to catch something like this, an uptrend, you can use your 65-day, you can actually use both your uptrend line or your 65-day simple moving average as the basis for answering the question, is my uptrend still intact? And if my uptrend is still intact, then I should be holding my position. If my uptrend line or my simple moving average breaks down, then I should be getting out of my position. So if you look at DNL, obviously we have a huge magnitude over here. And if we move here, and then we had some form of duration happen, and then another form of magnitude over here. And then right now we're in some form of duration. So I'd say you're inside the duration. So what's the first step? First step is to identify the trend. What's the prevailing trend in place? Sideways to downward bias. What's our strategy? Do we want to participate in sideways to downward biases? No, we want to stay in. 
up trends. So boom. You took uh, less than 30 seconds to analyze a stock, diba? You can now move on to the next one. Right? Tama yun, diba? Regardless of how much you love the company, diba? I mean, pwede mo, pwede, pwede mo naman mahalin ng kumpanya eh. Huwag mo nalang bilhin, di ba? Pag hindi siya nasa uptrend. So that's moving averages. We can use moving averages for that purpose. Moving averages, by the way, works best only in trending environments. Which means they work best in periods where prices are in an uptrend or in periods where prices are moving in downtrends. Why? Because in sideways movements or sideways markets, what happens to your moving averages? Your moving averages flatten out, especially over long sideways periods of time. Like sa spaghetti sila, diba? So in sideways environments, it's still best to use your support and resistance lines. When it comes to uptrends, then you can now move back to your moving averages or at least uptrending issues. Yeah.